Welcome back to another Harmonious at Lunch. We got another amazing guest lined up today, Michelle DeWitt from my home state over here. She's on the other side of North Carolina. I'm in Raleigh. She's in Charlotte. So excited to have this conversation today. But we're going to talk about nonprofits starting a company out of a personal mission against an injustice in the world. A beautiful, beautiful story of just strength, courage, and perseverance. I am super excited for this conversation. Michelle, thank you for joining me and welcome to the show. Thank you for having me, Brandon. I'm happy to be on the show today. Yeah, I, I'm super excited to dive in here. So why don't you, I know you have you have a book, you have a company, you have a nonprofit. Let's go back to the beginning. Tell me, where did all of this come from in your life? I know you had a, a interesting and unfortunate start. Yeah, so as a child, um, I, I started my nonprofit. It's called Unbreakable Faith Incorporated. We are, of course, a nonprofit. Um, it started when, uh, as a child, I went through a horrific experience um, in dealing with being um, raped and molested, um, starting at the age of four. And it continued. Um, I was raped at 14. And it continued. And these this was done by several family members. And so as um, being a youth pastor, um, at the, as I grew, I became a youth pastor, love working with youth. They are my babies. And I worked in our local school system here. And so, you know, as time went on and I wrote my book about the, some of the tragedies and challenges that happened in my life. Um, I, uh, after the book was written, I was told that I need to start a nonprofit because of what I've been through and also, uh, how I can help others. Mm. Yeah. And I think the interesting thing here, you had this, this awful situation happen to you, mm -hmm. but you changed my language. It happened to you. You made it happen for you and you created mm -hmm. something good out of this, a book first and then a nonprofit. What was, was there any sort of a, a transformation that happened in your life with you internally in order to even put the book out? Mm. So uh, I'm not a journalist. I tell this all the time. I don't like to doodle journal or anything. That's not my thing. <laughs> A lot of people do, um, but I had a friend that tell me, Michelle, you need to write a book. Every time you talk to the youth, you always uh, give them, I give them highlights. I didn't really go into detail, but I will always give them little things as far as challenges in their lives. Um, and so I was told that I need to write the book. And so I did that and um, that's how I got started. Um, I also, um, like I said, I am a strong believer. And so the forgiveness happened as I accepted Christ and um, move forward. That's amazing. It's so powerful. Um, and I, and I want to kind of dive in there. So someone told you or multiple people told you, you have to write a book because you have this amazing impact with kids, which is so cool to hear. Um, <laughs> how, did, how does a book become a nonprofit? Walk me through mm. that process. Okay, so with that happening, um, of course, I was uh, I, I was seeking counseling, a coach to help me with the nonprofit organization because I didn't know anything, what to do. And so it started out with a coach helping me. It was someone that I knew, one of my friends, and um, she was a coach and I wanted to find out how does this work? And she walked me through all the steps as far as the name, getting my um, tax ID number, um, making sure that all of my legal stuff was in order um, as far as, um, like I said, the name, the tax ID number, making sure we were labeled as a nonprofit organization versus a profit organization. Because as you know, a profit organization, there are some things that you have to do and it includes a lot of tax stuff. But uh, with a nonprofit, it doesn't. Um, it, it includes you filling out a form stating how much you have you know, made for the year. But those two different entities are just way different. And she did explain that to me. Um, there is a lot of support with nonprofits. Um, 
being a nonprofit can it, it comes about with you helping the community educating the community uh working in different areas as far as building up those that are in impoverished areas mm. yeah we have a soft spot for nonprofits at what if because you're so mission driven and you you exist to fight this problem that happens mm -hmm. that exists in the world and, and i love that mm -hmm. the one shift that we always try to get people to make it sounds like you're already there but is that business is business whether it's a nonprofit or a for-profit you, right. you, you have to make money you have to run it like a business and that's yeah, you why do. when you embrace that as a nonprofit those are the nonprofits that excel and and raise the most and make the biggest impact so I, I love that you well you're already tying this to the harmonious architecture the the mm -hmm. one discipline that we quite frankly talk about the least but is very important for nonprofits is risk and defense. It's traditionally called Ooh, legal. So yes. in a for-profit business, especially small companies, you know, we tend to just look the other way with that. So, you know, we get to the tax man when we have to, but right. <laughs> for you, that's super important that you're set up and you have the proper, you know, business structure to be a nonprofit because mm -hmm. that could be a disaster. Mm -hmm. Um, but I want to talk a little bit about another area that actually happens to be our favorite, which is navigate. I touched on it a little bit already, and I know you have it. That's your mission, your vision, and your core values. It's so present in nonprofits. What is what is your the mission of your nonprofit? And and while you're talking to, I want to put your website on the screen. So if you want to go check out Michelle's nonprofit, Unbreakable Faith, please the website's on the screen. But tell me about your your mission. So the mission of our nonprofit is to educate, 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 and also put it out there to warn our uh, parents and caregivers, we have workshops. Uh, one of the workshops that we have is called ATM. This particular workshop is amazingly transform, transform and motivated youth. youth. We normally, uh, well, what we do is we go in and we talk to the youth about being transformed uh, because here it is, you have went through a detrimental experience. So we want you to know that you are more than what you're thinking building up self-confidence. Uh, we are working with um, our local um, CMPD here. We're working with other organizations that can help us, counselors, um, and those that have been in the nonprofit industry for quite some time underneath uh, what our structure and what we're doing. Uh, we collaborate together in regards to our uh, our mission, which is to make sure that our children can overcome barriers, I do apologize, overcome barriers and receive um, success in life. That's amazing. That's that's a beautiful mission. And I love mm -hmm. edu educate, educate. So, so important, especially for the youth. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. so, you know, tell me, looking forward, what's what's the vision for your nonprofit for the next five, 10 years? Where are you where are you going with this? Yeah, so I am a strong advocate and I want the laws to change in regards to our youth and our teenagers. They are overlooked more so we're so political in regards to everything else except for our youth. We very seldom hear um, other than if it's negative about what accomplishments our youth and young adults have done, where they have come from. Um, so where we're going is to make sure that we go from um, county, city, state, nations to talk about how important it is to restore and reconcile in regards to our youth, our young adults, our family members, our parents. This has ripped a lot of families and where that's where we're going with it. I'm looking for more um, support with the organization, more um, more sponsorships, more grants. And that means that we have to put um, tooth and nail into letting everybody know who we are and what we are doing. And eventually, um, as the organization begins to grow, um, we will begin to save more lives and youth from off the street with sex trafficking. Mm, yeah, that's that's a huge vision. And I love that. So look, kind of looking back a few years then, how you got here, what are some of the trials and tribulations, if you will, you know, the the downsides of, of a nonprofit and how you got mm -hmm. through that to where you are now? 
Um, the downside of beginning a nonprofit is that you learn you there are certain things there is wording when it comes down to a nonprofit. Like um, when you're suggesting that you need some help, um, there are certain big corporations that are looking for keywords in order for them to even sponsor you or give you the monies that you're requesting. They look for a lot of collaboration and being a nonprofit, you have to make sure that you get with people that have been in this uh, uh, in this for a while. And so that's a challenge that that is still a continuous challenge for us uh, because we're, we, we are still a new, you know, um, organization. And so we are working with that. And sometimes, honestly, sometimes there are people who are um, in that same arena and they don't want you to get before them. You know, you find that out as well, whether it's a nonprofit or a, par a profit, everyone is not for you. And we've learned that as being a nonprofit, everyone's not for you. Uh, and you what you do is close the door and keep it moving. Don't stop. Uh, if you fall down, get back up. If it didn't go that way um, that you uh, visioned it to be. Go back and look at your vision. Ask yourself the question, what was I lacking? What can I do better? Um, those are some of the things that I've looked at. And also, like I said earlier, I had a coach and um, I wanted to go a different way. She said, that's not going to be uh, something that you want to do. Um, and she said it was just um, it, what I wanted to do was work with um, even younger children. My age group is 12 to 17 and then 18 up to 22. And I wanted to go a little uh, go down with it a little bit younger because it is happening to seven years old, seven year olds as well. But she said to stay in that area because I had more experience with middle school and high schoolers. That's what I did working in the school system. And she said, because of the knowledge that I had, I needed to stay there. So it's a good thing to have a coach. It's a good thing to do a lot of research before you even get started with a nonprofit. Um, there are so many agencies that um, are out there um, that will help you, but you have to have the correct wording. You have to have you know, all your ducks in a row when it comes down to that. Uh, also, put out there in regards that you need sponsorship. We have, we need sponsorship. As you say that, you know, being a profit organization, you, you, you're going to get some money because you're making a profit as a nonprofit organization. We have to put out there our mission statement, what we're doing. And that organization has to make a decision if they want to give to us as a nonprofit. So the downside is receiving a letter saying, we're not going to assist at this time or, you know, uh, reach w reach back out in about six months. And also the downside of it, even though I worked in the school system for 20 years, um, middle school and high school, um, going and getting back into the school system has been tough because of what we represent as being a nonprofit. You would, you would think that, you know, they're like, come on in. It's not. It's not, it's a lot of work um, and it's a lot of proving yourself, you know? So, yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. And it's unfortunate. Um, and that kind of leads me to the, what was coming to my mind, which is, do you see, because you you represent a, a very touchy and sensitive topic, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. It's super important. I don't want to take away from that, but it is, it's polarizing. Um, do you ever run into issues, whether it's, it's companies, you hinted at it with schools, but when you're seeking donations and, and investments from people that don't want to be involved with you because of what you represent and how do you navigate that? Oh, absolutely. Oh my goodness. So what we what exactly what I'm doing now, talking to people on podcasts, YouTube and advertisement is very important. You want to get the word out there. So when there are people uh, that say, yo, that's too much, you know, uh, yeah, we believe in going a different direction. Uh, like I said earlier, close the door and keep it moving. And the best way to keep that moving is um, go to the next, go to the next organization, nonprofit um, to see how you can get the help. Educate yourself more. 
um, as you grow the organization. It, it when there, like I said, there are doors that have been closed. I called this um, particular um, store, and um, I heard that they were helping out nonprofits. And when I called to speak with their HR person, and she asked me what we were doing, she said, wow, you know, that's great. What a wonderful thing to do. Uh, but I don't want our particular store corporation to uh, be a part of what you're doing because it can cause political issues. And I'm like, what? You know, you hear this and that doesn't make sense, does it? It just doesn't, it doesn't add up. Um, especially when you do so much advertisement on television concerning youth. It just didn't make sense. And so you do have those who just back up and say, no, even churches. You would think that churches would say, you know what, we need to educate. There are so many churches that do not want to touch this subject at all. There has been a lot of um, uphill challenges but it's not going to stop me. I'm going to keep going because I'm going to keep, I'm going to keep going because my mouth is not going to stop. I was silent for too long, too long. So I encourage anyone, if it's in your heart to give and help out organizations like mine, do it. Uh, there's been a lot of um, people who have been hurt in various ways. Uh, it could be, you know, a spouse walking out on them, you know, a single mother who whose spouse is a father whose spouse may have passed away. Uh, those grief the, the our youth deal with a whole lot more than that. And so I encourage anyone that's watching the show to keep it moving. Keep going. Don't give up and don't stop. And if you see that you need to start over, it's OK to start up. You can say you can start up as much as you want. As long as, as the cliche is, you can fall down, but just get back up. That, that is an inspiring, amazing message. And I can see that your fire is burning so strong. And that's what you're so <laughs> I, I absolutely love that. So real quick, I want to tie this to the harmonious architecture. And then I want to figure out where people can connect with you. Um, but let's go through this. So the three areas that are really, really present for me right now, I, I mentioned two of them, and that is risk and defense. Nonprofits, I mean, that's non-negotiable. You got to be set up the right way. Your structure, your wording, your language, your legal, all that stuff, your, your financial management. Uh, like I said, we work with a number of nonprofits. And I understand the intricacies there and the importance of mm -hmm. it. So please get, get a mentor, get a coach. Like Michelle said, if yeah. you're unsure of what you're doing, you want to start a nonprofit or even, you know, if you have a for-profit business, I see this a lot where for-profit business, but you want to have a nonprofit arm. Don't yeah. get confused. They are not the same yeah. thing. Please seek mm -hmm. the right legal advice there. Mm -hmm. uh, the other one that I mentioned, navigate. Navigation, it's your traditionally strategic planning, your mission, vision, core values. If there's, if that's not present in this conversation, I don't know what was, but Michelle, <laughs> you have that. It is rock solid for you. And that's the key. That's the foundation of business. Mm -hmm. We actually have, for those of you watching, we have a five-day workshop coming up, the Next Level Business Bootcamp, whatif.com slash navigate. If you want to solidify that foundation, get your mission, vision, core values intact and ready to rocket yourself through the growth of 2024 and beyond, you got to have that. And we're going to walk through it in that workshop. So please sign up. Um, and we're going to get you looking and acting like a nonprofit, but you are a for-profit business. I can't tell you the power behind mm -hmm. having a core navigation in your business that is so strong that your company and your culture knows what they're doing. And last but not least, Inspire. Traditionally mm -hmm. called Inspire. Inspire. Michelle, you have that. You have that mm -hmm. fire in you. I can tell you lead your people, mm -hmm. everyone associated with your mission so well, and you mm -hmm. inspire them to take action towards accomplishing the mission and the vision of your company. So that's just a little bit of how this conversation ties to the harmonious business mm -hmm. architecture. I want to put Michelle's website back on the screen here, please. If any of this resonated with you, please go check out what she's doing. Check out her book, check out her, her nonprofit here, Unbreakable Faith. Um, and Michelle, where can people connect with you if they want to learn more, if they just want to follow your journey and see how you're changing the world? Well, I, I were, um, we're all over. Um, if they go to the website, they'll see all of the other connections. Uh, we're on YouTube now. Um, and also, uh, my site has, uh, everything that you want to know, everything. Um, 
that you want to see up there. I mean, we're on Facebook. They can go to Facebook. And if they go to Facebook, you can see me there. Unbreakable Faith. If you pull that up, you'll see a whole lot that we're doing. Like right now, we're doing a um, coat drive and a blanket drive as blankets of love, coats of warmth for our youth and our young adults. Uh, we've also done a back to school drive. Please visit our site. We're always, 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 just as, as anyone but me personally, our organization, we need help. As a nonprofit, nonprofits need money to operate. Nonprofits, you are the people who support us. That's where the money's come in at. And we have to have that in order to operate a nonprofit. You have to have that. Just like you stated, you know, take some courses, make sure you, you know, people sign up with you and, you know, get these steps in order so that when you go out the door, you will be successful. Yeah, that's that's so great. Well, thank you again for coming today. This has been a great episode. Uh, and please go check out the website. See how you can give if this cause resonates with you. Um, and, and you feel called to contribute, please do however you can. Uh, thank you, Michelle. And we will be back with another episode of Harmonious at Lunch tomorrow. I'll see you then.